Hello everyone. I have a lot to compile into this one video. I'm going to make it just a grab bag of stuff. Uh, if I approach 10 minutes, then uh, I'll just uh, do a part two or something. Maybe. Uh, first, I wanted to show off these magazines might just show the covers off but um let's see if i can remember the order chronologically let's see march 05 here we go okay metal maniacs these are all from Texas, I forgot to mention that, at uh, Robot Monster Guitars in San Antonio. Uh, Iron Maiden cover story in this one. It's pretty much what I, what I did is I looked for Iron Maiden and Pantera and the bands that I'm the most into and bought those magazines. They did have some very old guitar magazines but none of them I think there was some that featured yes but uh, nothing that was like super super interesting to me so I didn't pick up those but anyway this is what I did get uh, this is um, March 2005 Metal Maniacs Slayer we're just getting ready to come out with the record or just had or you know what this was the rain and blood tour where they were playing the entire album saw that tour however the pageant they didn't do the blood brain thing at the end so that was lame also just bought this one pretty much because there was a dime poster that I'm gonna get framed another Iron Maiden cover story Uh, great strapping a lad article in this as well. November 2006. This is them, uh, a lot of talk about Ozfest from that year and this one. And, um, Devin and the drummer for strapping at the time talking about that tour. So that was interesting to dive back into that. I was 20 or 21 when I saw that. And another Iron Maiden cover story, this time in Brave Words magazine. I want to say that's Canadian. I don't know. We didn't have any, we didn't have Metal Maniacs and we didn't have Brave Words in uh, St. Louis uh, stores that I ever saw. So really cool to finally get to read a bunch of these over the past week. I'm already up to three and a half minutes probably shouldn't comment on that out loud We're moving forward yesterday was um, house slash cat sitting at my guitarist house which was fun by the way but listen to this on Jared's boombox um, been I've been reading the latest Martin Popoff book about Rush and just finished the Counterparts chapter so um, really really enjoyed revisiting that they this is the album where they moved back towards um, guitar bass and drums less keys so if you're into that also while I was a uh, house slash cat sitting Watch this awesome, awesome DVD. I think I found this at Planet Score, if I'm not mistaken, a couple weeks back, maybe last weekend. Um, awesome breakdown of the master tracks with uh, Dweezil and his engineer. And uh, footage and stuff, bio bio biographical 
uh, subjects taken from all over the place, media from all corners of the universe put into this. Some great, great bonus features. Uh, on the screen it says Bonum features, which is interesting. Um, also, found out today that on Hulu you can watch the SNL episodes with Frank. Um, he did two that I know of. The one isn't the first one that I watched. The extra so there's, um, I'm the slime. That performance is on here, but then you can also on SNL watch Peaches and Regalia, and another tune. Um, that for some reason I can't think of right now. But uh, yeah, that's on Hulu. Check that out and watch this. I don't know where you can watch the uh, classic album series. You used to be able to on Netflix, but they took it off. Also watched Romero's third in the trilogy of the uh, zombie movies that he did originally. Day of the Dead. Awesome, awesome movie. Um, maybe tied with... Uh, Dawn of the Dead as uh, my favorites of his output really really uh, great gore in this they came so far over the trajectory of his movies as far as making it look awesome when people were uh, facing their doom and some great dialogue um, kind of um emblematic or enigmatic or I don't know what word I'm looking for of the time the villains they just made them super racist and then you hate them <laughs> so um, lots of gratuitous use of uh, awful awful uh, language in this but uh, great good stuff love that movie Uh, let's, uh, do a short book review. Terry Pratchett's Feet of Clay. This is the third in the, uh, series about Discworld and, uh, Vimes and his crew. I liked this one a lot. My buddy Keith, who bought me this for Christmas. Thank you, Keith. Um, he actually bought me five books, which... That's an awesome Christmas gift. Thanks. Thanks again. I didn't like this one as much as the first two in the series. Still was pretty entertaining, and uh, I but I didn't fly through it quite as fast. I think maybe just my... Um, I've been engrossed in many things as we're seeing here today. Um, but... I think the major weakness in this is that the villain reveal towards the end is a little Scooby-Doo to me um, in that he's one of the only other characters in the novel that um, you could even possibly point to. There's not an, there's maybe not enough of a mystery going on here. Um, but otherwise, it's got everything that Pratchett is great for. The uh, quirky dialogue, uh, interesting characters. I don't want to get into details. I don't like to spoil books or really anything very much at all. Shows, anything like that. So, um, you should read this though. Uh, I, I think that um, you could do way worse in fiction that you're going to spend your time on. So... Terry Pratchett's Feet of Clay. That's going to do it for this edition. Uh, I'm going to make another video, I guess, right now. So uh, look for that tomorrow or in the next couple of days. Bye-bye.